Hi guys, welcome back. Uh, as I explained earlier that there are different uh, network devices like the switch does one piece of the job, the router does one piece of the job. Maybe you are now wondering what this guy is talking about because in my home there is only one device that does everything. Let's see this now. For example, as you can see, you might be having this device at home or this one. Most probably you will have a device like this. And this device, as you see, it is a router, it is a switch, it is a modem, it is a wireless access point. The switch part is, I mean, that device is like an all-in-one. It has the switch part, which is here, the LAN, where you can connect your different network hosts. For example, one can go on your laptop, one can go on your PC. If you have a network printer, one can go on your printer. If you have another laptop, you can connect one on your laptop. This ADSL slot, that port is where your phone line goes. The, the line that goes to your phone will go inside your router. Okay, that the power, that's the reset, and that the wireless line, the UPS for the wireless access. So basically, the router that you have at home, instead of having like this, uh, a switch here, Connects, for example, your PC here, your laptop here, another laptop here, that goes to your router, that goes to your RG11 phone line, and the internet. So instead of having this at home, you have only one device. Like this smaller one that's the switch that's for your phone line you have your antenna so basically if you see the device that you have at home it's acting as a switch as the modem Modem is modulated and demodulated because the phone line that goes here is analog. Uh, analog is like this, and everything that your computer understands here is in terms of binary, in terms of bits. So basically, there's a function of modem, the function of switch, the third function is wireless access point and the fourth function is a router. It will route all your traffic. So basically one device does all those functions. But for the sake of explanation it is better for me to put a separate switch, a router for you to understand clearly. So basically for the sake of explanation we we'll use this model but at home remember that you have one device that might be performing all those tasks. So to continue now let us, let us continue on IP address now. IP address, you have two types of IP address. You need to understand that you have two types of IP address. One is called the public IP address, and one is called the private IP address. The public IP address, I will come at a later point in time. What is the private IP address? Private IP address are addresses that you assign to host on a LAN. Private, as its name suggests, private IP address is an address that is assigned to a host on a LAN. It's like 
in your home you can have a nickname. That nickname is analogous as private IP address. Like you have several kids, each one has a nickname. It's inside the house. Everyone will call those kids by their nickname. But private IP address is the formal IP address that defines your network. I will come to that later on. Now, for private IP address, you have different classes of private IP address. You have the class A. You have the class B. And you have the class C. The class A IP address it starts with 10. The zero, the zero, the zero. It ends with ten. The two five five, the two five five, the two five five. An IP address is a four-digit number. Four. Each bar consists of eight bits, and each bar can go from one. From 0 to 255. Each part consists of 8 bits. I won't get in the detail how it comes to 255, but what you need to know that each IP address is 4 parts, and each part can go from 0 to 255. And you have another class, which is called the class B. It starts with 172.16.0.0 to 172.31.255.255. You have another class as well. It's 192.168.0.0 and 192.168.255. The IP addressing scheme that we are using here is called IPv4, Internet Protocol version 4. Now we have a new convention as well that we use, it's IPv6, Internet Protocol version 6. We are not going to explain uh, IPv6 in this tutorial. Now, why do we have three classes of IP address? We have three classes of IP address because we might have network that is very big, I mean local area network, for, for example, if you take an organization like Microsoft, just imagine the number of people working there, how many computers you can have. So the bigger network will use, the biggest network normally would be used, the biggest LAN they use a class A. For big organization as well we use class B, but for home users, for home users we use class C addresses. For this video we are going to see only class C addresses and what you need to know is a private IP address we assign it to us on a LAN. So basically if you are going to use a class A IP address you will need to input a subnet mask for class A, which I will explain later. If you are using class B, you will need to explain, uh, you will need to use a, a class B subnet mask. If you are using class C, you are going to use a class C subnet mask. Let me explain to you the different process answers. We will take class C. As I explained to you that class C, the range is 192.168.0.0.192.168.255.255. Now, for example, I need to build a small network. I just need to take one block from this. I can start, for example, from 192.168. For example, I want to take 1 from 1.0. I will take a network of 192.168.1.0. 
Now this is the network that I'm going to use. For each host on a network, you will need to put a subnet mask. The subnet mask is 255.255.255.0 for any class C address. Remember, I am using a class C address. It's 255.255.255.0 for class C. Now, the usable IP address that I can use normally is 192.168.1.02. Remember well that I can't go beyond 255. So the, the IP address range from this network is 192.168.1.0 to 192.168.1.255. It means that from this network, I can use from 0 to 255, but 192.168.1.0 is called the network address. I can't assign it to any host. And 192.168.1.255, I can't use it as well. It's called the broadcast address. Basically, I can use any IP address from 1 to 254. Usable IP address is from 1 to 254. For example, on my uh, PC, I can put an IP address of 192.168.1.100. The subnet mask will be 255.255.255.0. Okay, on another PC, I can't use the same IP address because IP addresses on a network needs to be unique. So the next IP that I can use is 192.168.1.101. The subnet mask is always the same, 255.255.255.0. Now, for example, I need another network. I told you that the range for class C start is 0 to 255. I can take another network. For example, I can take 192.168. For example, 100.0. What are the IP addresses that I can assign? We will start with 192.168.100.1 to 192.168.1.0. These are the usable IP addresses. Remember, 0 I can't use and 255 I can't use. I can use anything. I can build a network with 192.168.168.0, for example. My usable IP will be 192.168.168.1 to 254. I mean, 192.168.168.254. I don't want to confuse you with the concept of IP addressing. IP addressing, you just need to know that you can't have the same IP address on two devices on a network, on two hosts on a network. Uh, now, I am going in my next video, I'm going to give you an idea how we can assign those IP addresses to different hosts on a network if we want to build a network, for example. I thank you for watching my video and I catch you on my next video.